Let's get physical, it's Jordan here back in with this week's update and all the physical releases coming to the Switch. We're in the first week of October, what the hell? October the 3rd until the 7th. No face camera this week because frankly I look like death on a stick. I'd definitely be losing subscribers so you'll have to make your own mind up if and when I'm making a joke. That's always risky. Anyways, Nier Automata is quite a big release this week, something many people have been asking for for a long time. Considered to be a bit of a sleeper hit, this post-apocalyptic action game supposedly has a poignant story to tell about a hot robot lady called 2B, which uh, I'm sure is a strength of the pencil, and I like pencils, especially of the skirt variety, something I can get behind. While it may not be a perfect game, it resonated immensely with a lot of people and left its mark, and the creator is a bit of a cult hero himself or itself, you know, the, the metal moon face dude with the scarf. He'd be nothing without that scarf. Hopefully this port should be decent. It's a fairly old game, so I don't see too much issue arising. A lot of people are going to be happy, that's for sure. And our executive producers are because Alexander Kato, Cartoon Soren, Isa, Elisa, Robotech, Thorn Metaluda, and Jonathan Rumor have chosen this as their pick of the week. And just a reminder, if you live in North America, and if any of these retail releases shown here in this video take your fancy, and you want to buy them and support Switch Watch at the same time, check the links in the description. Video Games Plus are a great company, providing great service with free shipping over 80 Canadian dollars. Thanks to everyone who has supported us so far. And in return, just as a little bonus, Every week, anyone who buys something using our links will be put into a draw to potentially win a $10 discount on your next order. Yes, and this week's winner was Jeremy S. Yeah, Jeremy, check your emails on Monday. You will get a $10 discount code you can use towards another purchase. Yeah, so join in. If you buy something, you will be put into a weekly draw. Check out Video Games Plus. Check out our links. Thank you. Life in Willowdale Farm Adventures is a game I missed last week. Uh, I did see it, but it's one of those that seemed like it was a placeholder. But whatever, last week was mental. Here we are in Willowdale, yet another cozy farming adventure game, but this time the developers have been paid in Rolos rather than money. That sounds great. This is available in Europe right now. North Americans, you'll have to get your coziness elsewhere. You're not welcome in Willowdale. Alfred Hitchcock Vertigo should also be releasing this week, although it is microid, so it may or it may not. They have a very laissez-faire attitude with release dates. Maybe this week, maybe next week. Depends if the delivery driver takes a nap on the A5. Sometimes he does. Those truck stop pies are heavy on the stomach. Anyways, this is based off the Alfred Hitchcock movie. They make sure you know that in the title. They don't want you getting confused with that annoyingly good song from U2, although I think that would have been a better game. I would enjoy a beat -em up starring Bono, fighting his way to Elon Musk's office to demand more charitable donations. Okay, this is a game strong on the narrative, an adventure type game is supposed to be okay. Hope it runs well on the Switch though. And our executive producer Brent McLean has chosen this as his pick of the week. Fist Forged in Shadow Torch, I've mentioned this about a billion times already. Just a quick mention, it's supposed to finally release in North America this week. It's already out in Europe and Asian regions, supposedly a very good game indeed. No Man's Sky is releasing this week. I think many would consider this to be a miracle port of sorts. The ultimate redemption arc for a video game. Critically shamed upon its release with not dishing out what it promised. A bare bones package bereft of things to do inside the vast galaxy. However, I must point out that I wasn't aware of all the hype or PR. So when I did play it, when I visited my dad one summer, I actually enjoyed it. And that was before any of the content update. My dad doesn't have the internet so he can't update his games. But regardless of my easily pleased opinions, this game is supposedly a completely different game nowadays with more content updates than I've had hot dinners. I was very poor growing up. I'm genuinely fascinated to delve into this once again. This more complete experience and having on the Switch would be great to take on the go. It may not be the best way to experience it, but the developers seem confident in their porting jobbos. Although they were hardly going to say, sorry, it's a bit shit, but it'll have to do. And our executive producers, Precision Plague, and they have chosen this as their pick of the week. 
Demon Throttle actually released last week in Europe. Yeah, this one snuck out in the UK as an exclusive to game.co.uk. No idea about mainland Europe because trawling foreign websites gives me a headache. Remember, this gimmicky shit is physical only. For reasons, only for profit. Why pay 5 bucks digitally when you can only pay 30 for a physical? Piss off! You guys know I'm all about physical stuff, but needlessly gating off the release for no reason other than money is a shitbag excuse. I guess it worked for the gimmicky knobs at Devolver Digital though, as the US version supposedly sold very well indeed. Don't miss out on this physical only release, oh, it'll be rare in the future, wankers. Let's sing ABBA. It is claimed that there are many ways one can tell if someone is a good human being or not. However, the only true scientific way to tell is whether or not that person loves belting out songs of ABBA. Was Stalin a good person? No, he refused to sing Dancing Queen. You don't even need to count the millions of people he killed. Ah oh man, ABBA are legends and if anyone deserves this release, it's them. I don't know if this is releasing in North America, but if it's not, you best import it, you North American heathens. Otherwise, you're all Stalins. Chaos Head Noah cross Chaos Child Double Pack is releasing this week. This is a highly anticipated title for visual novel fans, mainly because Chaos Head is finally getting an English translation. Yay! This is part of the science adventure series, the same as Steins Gate and Robotics Notes. So a lot to live up to. We have a video up on VN Paradise telling you everything you need to know about it if you're unaware, so go watch that. I know VNs are niche as hell, but it's genuinely one of the biggest releases this year for fans of the genre. I think it's gonna sell pretty well. I hope it does. And our executive producer, God of Resin, repping the VNs, it's his pick of the week. LOL, surprise, BB's born to travel. I want to physically puke after saying that, but here we are. I believe it's the third LOL game on the Switch. I don't know what BB stands for, but I'm guessing it means bread bin, because I know my bread bins and I know they like to get around. Oh look, it's Outright Games again with their weekly releases. What are these guys smoking? Whatever it is, it's probably rolled up in the $100 bills they're making from pumping this shit out. Ultra Mega Extra Party Challenge is releasing in Europe this week. You poor suckers in North America have to wait until next week. Actually, I tell you what, this does look kind of fun actually. When I saw the name, I was expecting some Microids family guffage, but the trailer kind of sold me. It's a micro game compilation of weird stuff like WarioWare, but made by people who did those weird shmups with bodybuilders. You know what I'm talking about. Anyways, this is just random nonsense, but it looks like fun. If the latest WarioWare disappointed you, then maybe give this one a shot. Death's Door is releasing in Europe this week, at least that's what Amazon is saying. It also says the collector's edition is coming in November, so not sure what's happening here. Anyways, here you have a fantastic game. Many consider it to be their favourite game of last year, if you remember the video we made when you voted for your favourite games. So yeah, 25 quid seems like a steal in the UK. And our executive producer, Grant Sert, has chosen this as his pick of the week. Takano Tatsujin Rhythm Festival is finally getting its Western physical release after a delay of a month or so. Expect to get more of the same infectious rhythm gameplay with bags of personality and content. Sure, there's an online pass which I'm not a fan of, but I guess I'll deal with it since there are at least 70 songs on the game from the start, so yeah. I love the fact there are now four Taiko games on the Nintendo Switch. What a wonderful time to be alive. And our executive producers, Dane Wilkinson, Jennifer M, they've got their drum ready because it's their pick of the week. Yum Yum Cookstar is a brand new game in the Cooking Mama franchise. Oh wait, no, it's not since the developer who made Cooking Mama, Cookstar, got into a legal battle with the IP holder. So for the sequel, here's the clever bit. Instead of calling it Cooking Mama Cookstar, they called it Yum Yum Cookstar. They'll never know. Expect more cooking shenanigans and hopefully no cryptocurrency mining like it was rumored in the original game. What a time to be a dead person. Okay, we are heading into a segment I like to call, oh you Germans, play some German music. Is that German? Is this racist? I don't know, but Germans are my favorite people, so it's fine. German folk, are you ready for a trifecta of tripe, a triple turd sandwich, a trio of tosh, a triumvirate of something negative that begins with T? You have, are you ready? Mein Tierzapraxis Hund, Katz, Nager und Co. 
I think we've crossed the line here. Memory von Ravensburger and Rush Hour, which is not based on the Jackie Chan movie, which is a shame. It's based off a ship board game, which that's already out by now. Go rush out and grab these German people. Go get them. You got to rep your exclusives. Low Prince, the Low Print releases. Let's have a look. Love 3 is Premium Edition Games latest Switch pre-order. While this is Love 3, it's basically three games in one since it also contains the levels from Love 1 and Love 2. It's a minimalistic platformer in a 4-bit style. Yes, this ain't even NES style. This is calculator style, which I can understand will be off-putting for some, but don't judge a book by its cover because Steam has these highly rated indeed. It has plenty of options to customize your experience. Go fast, go slow, choose how many lives you want, test yourselves as much as you want. But wait, there's more because Premium Edition games have a second release going up for pre-order this week. Eagle Island and Eagle Island Twist is a double pack of roguelite platformers, which sounds odd and may not gel with everyone, but essentially they are a good game if you get your head around that concept. I mean, check on Steam, some people have played this for hundreds of hours due to the procedurally generated levels in the first game. It's very challenging too. Uh, the second half, Twist, those levels are fully handcrafted, so you're getting the best of both worlds here in what is a gorgeous looking pixel art package. The artwork is phenomenal. You can pre-order both of these games this week at noon. I wasn't told which noon, like I don't know which time zone, but if you're eating lunch, have a browse on their website, it might be there. And if you want to support us, you can also use our affiliate links in the description. Yeah, if you order using our links, we get a kickback as well, so you can support us and get a spiffing game at the same time. Snow Battle Princess Sayuki is Strictly Limited's latest Switch pre-order. This is hot off the heels of their success with Pocky and Rocky because this old ass PS2 game was initially supposed to be a Pocky and Rocky game. But then some business bullshittery happened and the license was pulled from them. Instead of throwing it in the bin, they decided to not waste their effort and reskin it into a totally not Pocky and Rocky game. It's a run and gun game that wasn't received well either originally on the PS2 or Wii or when they changed its name and released it on the Switch a few Few years back. Pretty low scores and not something that holds a candle to the recently excellently released Pocky and Rocky game. Still, they're only making a few thousand copies, I think they know it won't be an easy sell, but our executive producer, Instacritic, he's excited because it's his pick of the week. Jitsu Squad is another release of theirs, however, this is just a partner release, it is coming to retail later this year. Here they have their own standard edition, as well as a collected edition of this upcoming beat em up that looks like it's taken one too many speed tablets. This looks like a migraine in video game form. I suspect it's pretty decent though, part of the recent beat em up revival. Grab it if you're the kind of person who can't sit down for 5 seconds. Shadow Run Trilogy is Limited Run's main release this week. Yes, three all-time classic strategy RPGs in one package. Sounds like bargain of the century. Unfortunately, last I heard, the Switch ports were pretty garbage. Uh, I don't know if there's been a patch since launch, but it really brought the package down a lot from being an essential to eh, just get it elsewhere. Please do let me know in the comments if the performance has been smoothed out or not because that is kind of important. There is a standard and collector's edition available and our executive producers Punky Duster, Parsnip Coffee, they've chosen this as their pick of the week. Mighty Goose is their second game available to order at Limited Run Games. This is a distribution title and will be on Amazon, but Limited Run have their own cover version. Yeah, two cover versions. Uh, this is going on sale very soon. I believe Mighty Goose is the evolved form of Untitled Goose. Personally, I will wait until it's fully evolved into Mecha Goosey. Uh, yeah, I've heard that one's pretty good. This looks like a fairly decent running gun game with lots of colour and personality. It's been positively received, so grab it if you like running guns. I love the chunky sprites, it reminds me of something that would be like on the Game Boy Advance or something like that. Look at it, it's nice! Alright, we're heading into the imports. Play Asia territory. Yeah, if you want to import any game shown in this section, then please consider using our Play Asia links below. Play Asia is still the number one way to support us. They're a great company, and Switchwatch would not pro would probably not exist to this day. Because yeah, I'd have probably left otherwise. So thank you ever so much for your support. And if you want to, you know, get something and support us, you can also get 5% off for yourself. Yes, with our brand new discount code. S 
SW TV5. Yes, I did ask for SW5, but then they said no, that's too short. So SW TV5. It's not as nice, but I'll take it. SW TV5, you can get 5% off any physical item from PlayAsian. Now, this week, there's not really that much to import because there's only Touch Detective, Arena and the Fungi Case Files, and Hakuoki Shinkai Tenun no Sho, neither of which have English, and that's it. But I do want to update you on some interesting import news. Yeah, some new import announcements coming later this year or early next year. Samurai Maiden looks like a pretty cool upcoming hack and slash game starring lovely female samurai. Yes, made by the same developers as Bullet Girls Fantasia and Kandagawa Jet Girls, you know what you're gonna get. A lovely schlocky time. I'm not expecting it to be great, but I'm expecting it to be a lot of fun with boobs. It's releasing in Japan and Asia, no Western physical, but it does have English, so that is one to import 100% for sure. If you like boobs, you like samurais, you gotta get it. Melon Journey. <laughs> Why do I laugh at that? Melon Journey. <sighs> it's quite a way off. The upcoming Japanese physical is happening in March next year. Uh, there's been no word of a Western physical, but this does have English and is coming in a standard and collector's edition. It looks like a really sweet game. Great retro style graphics, more of an adventure game, an interactive talking to people. It looks lovely and I can't wait to experience it. And finally, when it comes to animal fighting games, I didn't think anything could top Fight Crab. Well, wait until you see Issue Saikyo Ozukan Battle Coliseum. Oh my god. I don't know if this has English. I suspect it won't. But goddamn, it is glorious. 24 animals and dinosaurs going at it in the name of research. Oh hell yes. I cannot wait for this one. Is it going to be shit? Oh yes. Am I going to enjoy it? Of course. And that's it. There is no community spotlight this week because frankly, I just want to go and take a nap. So yeah, uh, don't send me any more pictures. I've got your pictures already. Uh, wait until uh, next week. Uh, I'll just use them then, okay? Anyways, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this uh, slightly weird Let's Get Physical episode. Big up to our executive producers, Dane Wilkinson, God of Resin, Boombox, Brent McLean, Jonathan Rumor, Santa Tartaruga, Alexander Cato, J. Cross 7776, Elissa, Punky Doosa, Cartoon Soren, Robotech, Z, Raven Knight, Thorn Metal Luna, Parsnip Coffee, Issa, V, Mental Traveler, Grantsert, Viz, Jennifer M, Instacritic, Precision Plague, and Karachat, plus you. Yeah, you. Yeah, you're watching right now. If you watched all the way through, you're a legend because you watched all the way through. And that means you like us. And the YouTube will show us to more people the longer you watch. Anyways, if you are one of those people, please leave me... Uh, what do we got? Um, an eagle. An eagle emoji in honor of Eagle Island. Twist. Yes, that's one. I'm pretty sure there must be an eagle emoji because the world and technology is run by Americans. And you love eagles, so of course you have one. Anyways, go watch some of our other stuff. Little Witch No Better Review. I reviewed it last week. Uh, it's actually better than I even thought. I had... Pretty low. I, was, I knew I was going to enjoy it, but I had low expectations about it being actually really good. But actually, it is really good, surprisingly. And uh, yeah, go watch some of our other stuff. Some things must have happened, right? Yeah. Anyways, take care. Goodbye.